What's going on guys, it's Shin here, today I'm back in the garage for another update on the FD RX7 Time Attack car I hope you guys are ready for this episode today because a lot has happened since the last video So long story short, I've been working my ass off trying to finish the race car before season starts. So I made a lot of progress off the camera, which are kind of small things. So let me just explain what's been happening. I'm gonna start with the back here. First up, I finished wiring up the rear end of the car. Uh, it's hard to see, but I actually have a wiring harness tucked in. Uh, and that, that wire goes all the way to the driver's side of the vehicle. I'm still gonna need to put in the accu sump and figure out the roll cage situation. I've been talking to the guys from quicklatch.com and the plan is to have a quick latch release on the trunk here as well as on the hood as well as on the bumper. It's gonna be super easy to pop the trunk. You just push the button and it will open right up and it looks sweet and it works without rusting and for second reason is that I have this ugly cable you see going from the latch in the rear to the front of the vehicle and for some reason the previous owner took out the fuel cap latch system. This fuel tank cap is not held in with anything so I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do here maybe do like a magnetic solution so that it will pop in and out right now I have like a duct tape wrapped around the tab here to hold itself together when it's closed coming around to the side here as you can see, I started putting the HVAC system in. Of course, the AC is deleted, but I want to have heating system in the car. So the heating components are back in. That is the harness that I completed for the engine. Uh, the ECU connections, bunch of plugs for the dash, as well as harness for the fuse relocation, which is going to be mounted next to the battery pack back here. The uh, left side harness is also done. I just need to put the dash back in which is getting flocked right now and here is where a lot of progress has been made check this out the engine is finally looking like it's coming together I put the LS6 intake manifold all the piping is fitted here is the LS6 engine harness that I built it's coming from the firewall there between the heater core hose inputs uh, I clamped it down with a P-clamp here and by the way some of you are asking me where I got that P-clamp uh, I ended up buying a kit as well from Amazon so I'll put the product link in the video description below so you guys can check it out but here is the completed harness look how pretty that looks it looks like I have a wire tucked show car now here coming on to the driver's side wire harness comes out injectors coil connection and into the intake portion here and I have a water temperature sensor as well as alternator signal cable going there and then one thing you notice here coming from the power steering rack right here is that I got high power pressure line coming out into the turn one power steering pump I had to build a custom power steering line and on the low pressure side I have line coming out of the power steering into the power steering cooler out and back into the reservoir again. On the clutch though, in the previous video, I had this line hooked up to the brake line. That's how the previous owner had it routed. And uh, I realized that that's not a good idea because if this gets dirty, which it does, the brake reservoir would get dirty and it would make the brake lines all dirty so what I decided to do was get a reservoir for clutch itself and brake itself like I did before so now it's a two separate systems another thing I did here is a steam port system this cable here LS engines come from factory with steam ports on top there's two in the back two in the front two in the back of my car were capped off and the two in the front by factory were hooked up to the radiator in there. The theory behind steam port is that once the engine gets hot and then coolant is somewhat evaporating, the steam is generated and the steam has to escape somewhere, right? And because the coolant inlet is up here and the head is higher position, 
than the coolant inlet outlet the theory is that there will be steam getting trapped in the cylinder head so what a lot of people end up doing is connect these steam ports together so that pressure can escape the system so that you don't damage the head another reason why people hook up steam ports front and back is that i heard cylinder number seven gets overheated so what people do is for prevention for heating they hook up the steam port from seven to the uh, eight and then up to the front so what i have here is up a end line going directly into the steam port here on the passenger side rear into the driver side rear coming to the front driver side steam port which goes under the throttle body into the passenger side steam port and this will be hooked up to my coolant reservoir another thing i did was i installed a aftermarket water temperature sensor here which will be running the signal to the speed hack gauges instead of the original location which was here now i had a little disaster with this because what you have to do to install a temperature sender is use a little adapter like this to go from i think it was one ace npt to like m15 or whatever the gm's head is um, so you, the sensor goes in here into the adapter and then you bolt that in my problem was when i did that the adapter literally broke half inside the cylinder head so i actually had to take this head off and uh, re-tap it and uh, plug that up and then put the head back on and drill into the water pump put a new sensor in and hook everything up so that was kind of a pain in the ass that i did off camera like i said i did a lot of tedious things off the camera so you didn't have to witness that and go through the painful process with me Over here, I have a throttle cable. Now, I don't know what throttle cable was on my car, but I'm assuming it's OEM Mazda or OEM LS. This was the stock um, throttle cable here. And what I did was I went with a 48 inch low curve throttle cable, uh, simple setup. What I did was I took off the stock FD pedal stop which is this little plastic piece and install that on the new local aftermarket throttle cable and the back end here is adjustable all you have to do is remove this allen key in here and then this gold piece will slide up and down and you can adjust the lens as needed it'll be mounted here on the local throttle body uh throttle cable mount this guy right here so that's it for the engine side of things as you can see i started putting the headlights in just to see where the wire harness would uh, come in which is right here i do plan on going with like um all magic if i can find all magic headlight i'll go with um uh, hot water labs headlamp assembly i removed the harness and relay for the headlamp motor anyway so it's not going to go up and down anymore it's going to be manual if i was to keep this as is as for the suspension i'm going with stance uh this was custom valve by the guys over at stance it's 18k in the front 16k in the rear and a lot of people you know obviously the first thing you people complain about with ls swap is that okay you're messing up the weight distribution front and back yeah of course you're putting ls engine and t56 transmission but aluminum uh, block on the ls is actually not that heavy and the t56 while it's heavy it's distributing the weight to the rear so the weight distribution does not get that much screwed up but obviously like any other build you want to do it properly uh so that's why i contacted the guys at stance and they were able to spec me a custom suspension to specifically work for a v8 swapped ftr7 it is also coated with the special coating called edp which is so and rust resistance so it's gonna last a long time and it's got this pillow ball mount so it will flex as needed so again thanks to the guys from stand suspension for walking with me to spec in a coilover built just for my car
Thanks guys, excited to run this. And lastly, one thing I forgot to mention is this piping that goes from the heated core to the LS water pump. You can tell the, the difference in diameter just by looking at it here. The front is larger than the rear, but when it comes to the heated core side, it's the same size. When I saw that, I was like, there has to be L-shaped hose that fits perfectly for this application. And sure enough, there are hoses that uh, from gates that fit specifically for this application well not specifically but it fits this application so check this out these are the two hoses that i found uh these are part numbers 28471 and 18078 these are the two hoses you're gonna need one side is larger diameter while the other side is same diameter and of course once that's done i'm gonna be insulating it with the heat protector again from my guys from wirecare.com thanks again and uh so that this thing doesn't burn up now another thing is with the rear rotors these are oversized rear rotors from 99 ft rx7 i think it's the spirited r or rz edition it's basically a special edition rear rotors uh, that was only available in Japan and these are 314 millimeters which is like 20 millimeters larger than stock FTR 7 so this is like the only JDM component on my car this and that when I took off the rotors it was destroyed so what I had to do was actually start looking for a new set of rotors online and these rotors are literally like $450 a set and that is the cheapest I could ever find anywhere. Luckily for me, the old rotors had enough meat to be rotated. So what I had done was I had the old rotors rotated and then kind of repainted the center portion so it looks like uh, somewhat new. And at the same time, I found a new set for like $250 shipped on the forums. Super cheap. So I have that as a backup now. So for those of you who want to go 314 millimeter rotors in the rear end, just uh, quick caution that when the rotors wear out you're gonna have a hard time finding a new set of rotors and it's not gonna be cheap the rear wheel studs because i'm going wide body had to be replaced with this aerop extended wheel studs the problem with these unlike the fronts that you can simply press out i'll show you after these is that in order to replace the wheel studs in the rear you have to take out the wheel bearing so what i had to do was remove these uprights take it to my friend's shop remove the wheel hub and then remove the bearings and then i had to cut off the piece of wheel bearing that was stuck on the hub and then i had to install new arp extended wheel studs in the hub put a new bearing in the upright and then press everything together so this is the result of what i have here new wheel banks new wheel studs it's gonna look nice so what i'm gonna work on next is reinstall the uprights on the rear install the coil over up front install the brakes uprights in the front uh finish up the dash on the inside finish up sinks here on the engine bay install the new sort of cable intake all the battery parts connections and iq sump winding gotta figure that out install the headers i also have air fuel gauge coming in so i have to uh put a little hole on the headers and install and weld the banks so i can see afr on this car once it's up and running hopefully soon within the month of april this car should start up but once i start up i want to do new fuel pump new injectors i want to install the speed hack gauges inside the car and of course i gotta do wide body as well so it's not gonna be a hundred percent finished just yet but i do want to see this thing just crank and start up because when you change too much at the same time you don't really know what the issue is 
uh, because you change so much, right? So I wanna change a few things at a time, make sure it starts, make sure it runs first, and then I'm gonna do more high horsepower modifications to the car and go wide body. So thanks again for watching, guys. As always, thanks for subscribing. Hit the like button if you like the video, ask me questions uh, on Instagram, Facebook, or in the comment section below if you have any, and I'll see you in the next video.